So once again, welcome to the Scrapbook Live. I'm Megan Jacks. Um, we're going to be putting together a blog post today um, from Creative Memories. Today is December 14th, uh, but we are putting together a, uh, a layout inspired by a page that Creative Memories published on their blog on November 19th, 2019. That was during the Black Friday promo of 2019 when we had the North Pole Magic and um, the Charming Village of Border Punch. That was the promo that year. So um, I loved um, the North Pole Magic. I still have some of it. I love the blues and the reds and the whites together for that winter theme. And of course, the Charming Village Punch is, is adorable. So this layout really caught my eye. It kind of comes and goes, especially when we have those promos like that. Um, we don't, we see a little bit of the sneak peeks of those promos and things put on the blog, but it doesn't always um, come back as frequently of those blog projects as it does for regular collections. So regular collections, we may see four or five different blog projects, but those promos, we may only see, may only see one or two. So they kind of fade from our minds a little bit quicker. Um, that's why I really like this one. I think it's cute. Um, it's fun. It's just got a couple photos on it, but, um, well, I'll turn over to my um, tabletop here and we'll tell you like kind of what my inspiration was as I looked at it. So the handout, if you need it, is on my blog. The first link in the comments for the Facebook Live has a um, take you to that blog post. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can um, go down into the description and you'll see a link to the blog to get this handout. Um, and I just copy and paste those directions from the Creative Memories blog. If you need to go to the blog project, you can actually go this QR code will take you right there. So um, this particular... Um, when I was looking at this, I liked, I liked seeing the different papers in play because that's always fun when you have scraps to kind of use those different um, pieces here. The other part that I saw was it this um, layout uses the um, medallion chain, um, which is an older retired border maker cartridge. But what caught my eye on it is it made me think of cupcakes, the rounded tops of the shape of the medallion punch. So what I wanted to do was like, oh, I haven't used my cupcake border maker cartridge yet. So I thought, oh, that'll be fun. And in all honesty, this page just has two photos on it. Um, it just has, you know, the, the center section here for some photos and my birthday photos for my kids. It's usually just a picture of them sitting at the table, blowing out their candles. Maybe I'll get another picture of them with their siblings or my husband and I'll jump in the photo. So a single page layout with just a couple photos works perfect for birthday layouts for my family because we just don't have a ton of photos from those um, from that particular event. So I found some photos of my daughter's birthday from actually from this year. So I'm working in 2022 photos. Let me just get everything out here and I can show you what I'm working with. So... I've got some photos just of them blowing out their candles and the sibling. Now you have to, um, Kevin was working. That was the deal. Why, why Kevin wasn't, was he working? He must have been working and we didn't. He, and so when my, my son was working, uh, my oldest was working over the summer, he would, he was working till close. So he wasn't getting home till almost two o'clock in the morning. So when we did, we didn't want to delay the birthday cake anymore. So we just had, went ahead and did the, um, the fun without him. So I've got three square photos here. These are trimmed to four by four, but that in general was, you know, I cut them down to size. I'll probably do a little bit more trimming to narrow them up to get them to fit and leave a little bit of space between the photos after I mat them. But these are my photos. So I've got three photos that I'll be working with. And then I went into the party time collection and I started playing around. I knew I wanted to use the cupcake punch. So um, I actually went ahead and punched one of the cupcake borders because I wanted to see what it looks like. And it's a pretty bold punch. Um, you can see that it's, it, you know, punches a pretty substantial cupcake. Um, the, it's not, a, I don't consider this a delicate frame or a delicate punch, especially if you compare it to something like the medallion frame chain punch, um, where it's a real thin cut that it makes, but this makes a pretty thick piece, which is nice because otherwise it may not punch as easily, but this punched really well. And then it was a matter of going through my party time collection and finding pieces um, 
patterns that would work. And um, I'm going with a little bit of the blue and green theme here, um, largely because it just worked with my photos better. Um, and it's also a combination that I haven't necessarily done already with party time. So as I'm putting this together in my album, this will allow me to have, um, I have a lot of party time, uh, layouts for the birthday, which I still love the party time. And what I do like about it is I can make it different every time. So, um, I'm using the blue and green with a little bit of that craft, um, paper in there, the craft colors. And that way it's just going to be uh, different enough from the previous ones that I've done. So I'm making this party time collection just continue to work for me as I'm making all my various birthday layouts. So as we're looking together, looking at this, we have a base page and they talk about in when they put this together, they used um, just a white um, in the North Pole Magic. There is a white piece of paper that has almost like a flex of uh, red and blue in it. And that's what they've used for their base page. Now, um, one of the things you can kind of tell here is I'm working with a lot of scraps. I don't think any of these pieces are 12 by 12. Uh, so what I'm doing, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build this on just a piece of white cardstock. This is um, the insert out of the um, one of the 12 by 12 um, top loading pages. So that's what I'm going to build this on. Right now, I think the top loading pages are coming with other colors of um, cardstock inserts. Um, I have some leftover just white pieces. So that's what I'm building this on. I'm, I'm going to end up covering the entire thing. I wouldn't even have to use white. I could have used something else. I could have used the cover sheet from a paper pack if I'd wanted to. I don't need it to be cardstock weight. Just regular paper weight would have been fine. Uh, the one thing I am going to be doing is this. If I had had a full sheet of this white with the blue flick, flex in it, the opposite side is the blue on blue stripe from the Party Time Blue collection. I could have used that. I want this uh, white with the blue tiny polka dots to be that background where you see the white here in the middle of the paper. That's what I want that to be. I will probably trim this piece down a little bit. I don't think I need it to be as wide since I'm going to be covering everything up. So as I'm building this, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to start um, and I'm going to build it from the top to the bottom or I'm just going to follow the directions. I think we'll try to walk through all the directions in order. I'm not deviating too much from the overall scheme of things except I'm using a little bit of different punches, different colors, and not building it on a background piece. So um, what I wanna be able to do here is, I'm starting with my background paper, and I need to cut a piece of paper that's gonna go across the top here. It needs to be two and a half inches. And they use a light blue. I am gonna be using this green color here. The opposite side is the stripe. So I'm actually gonna be using this paper in two ways. I'm gonna be using it to come across the top here. And then the stripe, I'm gonna go where they use the blue and the white piece, those um, uh, almost like a border. I'm gonna be using the stripe for that. But we're gonna start off using this green. And the reason I'm doing the green, I want a solid tonal color, not too busy when I punch the cake punch, I'm gonna punch the cake punch in blue and white, and that will allow it to stand out against the green. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this piece to two and a half inches, and I'm just gonna do a dry fit, meaning I'm not gonna start adhering things, I'm just gonna be laying them on my paper. So that's two and a half inches. And that was step one. Step, or excuse me, that was step two. For step three, I need to cut eight pieces that are three by one inch. And those are all of the small rectangle bars that are the different colors. So let's quickly talk about what I'm doing with that. I've gone through and found some papers. I have this piece of paper. This is, I think, also from the tonal, uh, the party time blue. It is um, checked on one side. It has blue with white circles on the other side. I'm going to use that. I'm actually going to use both sides. 
of that one. And then I'm going to also use some of this craft paper. The opposite side does have blue on it that I could still use. So I'll cut a few from there. And I think that's all I was going to use. I'm just using the blues here because I'm going to pull the green back in with that stripe. So I'm going to cut, I need a total of eight. So I'm gonna have to cut four from each of these pieces of paper. It just happens to be this particular piece of paper is already three inches wide. So I am just going to cut one inch sections off. And I'll use both sides. So I will cut a total of four. I did see a question about whether we will have any more promos this year from Creative Memories. I don't think so. Um, I just, I typically we just end the year on the last chance or on this, on, you know, kind of that clearance um, promo. And that's kind of what the December deals was. Um, so I would not anticipate seeing anything else. If we would see something, I would expect it to be this Friday. We might have some more details. So I don't want to say never say never, but I'm not anticipating anything. So these are one by three inch bars. And for this piece here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure it because I want to see, okay, I am nine inches long. So I'm going to cut two one inch strips from this piece. Actually, I have a scrap that I think I can get a one inch piece out of. So I'm going to actually cut this scrap. to one inch wide and then cut some four inch strips out of that. I'm using up scraps where I can. Another place for you to look to find some patterns to use would be in your mats. You can of course mix and match collections. These needed to be three inches and I totally cut them to four instead of three. You use four three inch bars across. So I've got two of those. I'll be able to use both sides or I can use, I could still do if I want more craft in there. Um, and then I need another one here that is one inch wide, three inches. So I also need to announce that um, next week and the week after that, there will not be a scrapbook live. I'm actually going to be um, traveling a little bit for Christmas. So I won't be around um, or I won't be, I won't be available. My kids are going to be home anyway, and it's Christmas. And so taking a couple weeks off from some of the more, um, you know, continual uh, activities of scrappy activities, going to go make some memories so that I have some photos and such to work with in 2023. So we will convene after the first of the year for another scrapbook live. So after today, the next one will be in January. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead. I've got this paper. Um, I plan to use this for mats for my uh, photos, but I believe I'm going to be able to go ahead. I can take out a one inch piece. I'm going to go ahead and cut a one inch piece that I'll be able to use for part of my um, layout. So I'll cut that one inch and then cut this into three, a two, three inch sections. I really want to make sure that I give enough of this craft color coming through. Okay. So now that I've got those, I can start kind of just putting these into place. I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to glue anything in I'm, or I'm not going to adhere anything. I will cut down this piece here. 
the center white piece. I'm, I, I'm not sure what size it needs to be. That's why I haven't cut it yet. Okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna totally admit to you guys, I'm not a huge fan of the, of the gingham color. So I might just use that. I don't know, how do you guys feel about these, these types of patterns? We see them a lot. I call them the gingham, makes me think of, you know, tablecloths. We see them in the red and the blue. I'm just, it's, it's not my favorite. I'm just gonna admit to you guys right now. I like plaids, but, um, it's not my favorite. I do see a question from Vicki about the power hour last night. So Tessa and I did our power hour. You can go ahead and find that on our YouTube channel. If you go to just look up Megan and Tessa on YouTube, I think it's actually um, youtube.com forward slash Megan. Make it, maybe it's Megan and Tessa scrapbooking. I don't know. Just look it up. It's there. You can also go to Megan and go to the shop. And if you go into the uh, December 2022, um, oh, the December 2022 product, you will see the link to it there. All right. So we've got those pieces kind of put in place. Um, the next thing they want us to do is they want us to cut the dark blue borders from the patterned paper. The North Pole collection, the North Pole Magic collection had one of those sheets that they do is where they give us some mats and some borders on there and you kind of cut everything apart. Uh, so that's where they get those borders from. Of course, uh, with um, party time, they we had a sheet that had a bunch of mats on it. It didn't have borders, but I'm going to use this stripe. I went ahead and measured it in Photoshop when I put used the sketch and it's about three quarters of an inch. Give or take as much there as you want. Um, obviously the more you use, the less space you have in here for your photo. So I'm going to uh, do mine at three quarters of an inch. Um, if I want to dial that back a little, if I think it's too much, I can just over, I can just tuck it under my other pieces. It might be three quarters of an inch is actually pretty bold. Well, it obviously helps if I don't do it at an inch. I made mine an inch. It needs to be three quarters of an inch. Talking and cutting sometimes is not my strength. And so I'm seeing some comments about the plaids. Yeah, the, uh, the ginghams, you know, I have a tendency to leave it aside. Maybe the opposite side is a color that works better for me or a pattern that's always nice thing about the double-sided papers is oftentimes that other side just works a little bit better. So here we go. got those pieces there. So I just liked, I wanted to keep this kind of light and airy, keep some, the craft colors coming through and you're starting to see how it's shaping up. And this is a time also where I'll look at my combination here. So what I'm seeing is I've got my craft pieces on top of each other and I don't want that. All right. That's not what I want. I don't want my craft and craft. I want it to be, so I'm going to slide my pieces around a little bit. All right, I like that better. I like how they're just a little bit more shifted. So, um, so I'm gonna make one other quick adjustment. I'm gonna move the darker pieces to the outside and let the lighter pieces be in the middle. I'm gonna see how that looks. I don't think it probably makes that big of a difference. Dark colors can be a little bit more anchors. They serve good to be borders, you know, to kind of like, you know, keep everything tucked in the middle there. I don't know. We'll go with that. So next up, the next step, now we're ready to go on. We did step four. Step five, they want us to go ahead and do all of the mats and the photos. And I do need to get those done because before I put everything into place and glue everything down and here, everything, I need to make sure my photos are going to fit in here just right. So I've mentioned already that I've got four photos that are four by four. I could just put them on just like that. 
And to be fair, then just come in with my, but you can already see I'm kind of tight, right? I'm not going to have a lot of room to do another, another piece here. I probably have plenty of room here at the top to push things up a little bit. If I wanted to give myself a little bit more space, instead of being two and a half, I could ultimately probably shrink that down to two inches and give myself a little bit more breathing room. I definitely want some breathing room. I do not want it to be super tight around everything. And of course I could always shrink down this um, piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to trim these down to um, take them down by a good quarter of an inch on each side. So they'll be more closer to three and a half inches. I have a very squeaky old blue trimmer. I, it's like it's wheezing. It's just, you know, that, remember from Toy Story, Wheezy? I mean, he was like a squeezy toy, but I was just like, that's what it makes me think of. Sometimes I'll cut and then I'll look back at the photo and determine, is there more I need to take off of one side or the other? I try to keep things centered. So I'll come back over to this side and finish trimming it to that three and a half. That's why I like my guillotine um, trimmer is that it lets me make those little adjustments. I know some people like the um, personal trimmer or the, excuse me, the, the 12 inch trimmer. Tessa uses the old 12 inch trimmer. I think she's crazy, but that's okay. We love her anyway, despite the fact that she cuts her photos with the wrong tool. I can say that and she, I don't think she's busy this morning. I don't think she's tuning in. So there's my photo. So now I can come into if I want to make some mats that will go around these and I just want thin mats. I don't need anything very thick. I'm going to use this paper. It's going to give me just a little bit of that craft, but keep it light. So, uh, these are, I just cut these to three and a half by four. So I'm going to trim my paper. Uh, to, I need to, I'm going to trim it to the widest I need it to be, which is going to be four and a quarter. I'm going to do a quarter inch mat, which will give me actually an eighth of an inch all the way around the photo. So four and a half, my photos will sit on here like this. Actually, yeah, they'll sit on like this. So I need to cut it to four and a quarter, maybe a little bit over four and a quarter. And then I'll have room to cut those three mats. So cut it to four and a quarter for my four inch tall mats or photos. And then all of these will be trimmed to three and three quarters because my photos are three and a half inches wide. Whenever I trim my photos, just kind of my tip to people when you're trimming your photos, I always try to trim my photos to a size that is like the nearest quarter inch. Because then it's easy for me just to cut my mats at that, at the appropriate size rather than, you know, adhering my photo to the page and then how, or to the, um, to the paper and then cutting around my photo. It just doesn't, that's how I get crooked mats. I like straight mats. So, um, I usually just trim my photos. I crop them to the nearest quarter of an inch, sometimes eighth of an inch. Um, but I try to go quarter of an inch and then it's easy for me just to make those mats. So I'm doing my mats at three and three quarter inches. And then we'll put these all on So you can see there, I have a little bit of that craft paper, the craft color showing through. That's just a nice contrast with the blue and the green. I will admit, I did recognize these are Seahawk colors. Um, we're not major Seahawk fans. I can't say that my child is a Seahawk fan. So it's our little bit maybe ode to Seattle birthdays. We have Phoenix birthdays. We have Seattle birthdays. 
except for Cody. He only has Seattle birthdays. He wasn't, he was born in Phoenix, but was, hasn't lived there since he was six months old. So there's those. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and punch another um, uh, border with the from the blue. It's the um, Starry Night Shimmer. I think it's called, is it Starry Night? Something like that. The, the bluish shimmer paper. It goes wonderful with this collection. I really need to start writing down all of the supplies. Normally, I'm really good about remembering, but of course, I have that. You know, you're you're staring at a person and you can't remember their name. Like you're literally looking at them. And you're like, I know your name. Like three minutes ago, I totally told myself, hey, they're such and such. And then when you go up to say hello, you've totally forgotten their name. I feel that way about what I'm going to call Starry Night Shimmer. If somebody else is on here and remembers, wants to chime in with what it's called, I'd appreciate that. The shimmer papers do punch wonderful. I love that. So I, I am appreciative of the lighter weight shimmers. They do punch nicely. I need to say this because I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to go ahead. Um, I think I'll punch my cake borders too. So the cake borders, you need two of whatever border chain. You could use a sticker. Um, you need two of those, right, to go top and bottom. And you don't have to. You can adjust if you don't want to use all those pieces or all the borders. Um, it really just depends. Maybe you have a sticker across here that you would use and use the border at the bottom. Um, so when we're doing the cake borders, remember, I'm going to punch the cake out of, well, actually I was going to use white shimmer, but I'm actually think going to go ahead and pull out this, this, um, dotted paper. I think I'm going to punch it out of that instead of the white. So I'm going to punch it. Thanks, Amanda. It's starry night shimmer. I'm going to punch some cake at one cake border out of starry night shimmer. Uh, this one, if you look at the directions, and you look at the layout here, you can kind of see how they have the red is the background punch that they did. And they actually punched then cut that one. You can see it here in step eight to one and three quarter inches. So they punched it and cut it a little bit wider. Then they punch a second one out of another color out of the blue and they trim that at one and one half inch, meaning that it just sets the, the red forms um, the background plus the bottom of the blue border. So whatever border I use as my background border is actually going to then form a small band at the bottom. So um, I think it's going to end up, I'm planning to do my blue as my narrow border, the one and a half inch, and then the white will be the one and three quarter inch with my cake. And of course I may have to adjust cake might be taller than, um, or shorter than the, um, and of course it's misbehaving already. There it goes. Okay. Give everything a punch. For some reason, it's just wanting to catch those edges. Just needs, I think it's just, I just have to give it a little wiggle and it's coming free. It's not tearing. One more should do it. There we go. Yeah, I'm not sure what was catching in there. So this is the one that's going to be in front. So it's shorter. I'm only going to cut it to an inch and a half. And if I cut it to an inch and a half, I do have a very, very narrow, about an eighth of an inch along the bottom that all of my cake pieces will sit on. And that's fine.
So there you can see, sits along there. Now what I need to do is I need to come under here and I need to get that white paper out. And I've got plenty of space there to cut another, to cut, to punch and cut this. What I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna offset. So when I started this one, I lined it up. When I punched my Starry Night, I lined it up at the, the, the dash here, the starting point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, offset this a little bit. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm actually gonna start it about halfway. So you can imagine this silver section here. There's like, you know, kind of a halfway point there. I'm just totally guessing where it is, but that should give me an offset when I, st when I layer my pieces together. If I started the punch the same way, I would be creating a shadow. I want an offset. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start it in a different spot. That'll give me that offset. So now when I start it there, you can see those pieces are offset a little bit. I'll be able to also um, shift it up and down, but you can see they're not gonna be just a shadow of each other. If I had started them the exact same way, this is what I would have ended up with. I would, even if, even if I offset it top to bottom, I would just basically have a shadow. So Jackie's giving the suggestion I could punch two um, papers together at the same time. And that is definitely an option, especially when you're using the thinner designer paper. Sometimes you do need to give it a little bit more to um, cut through. So giving, um, doing two pieces at once would be helpful. But there we go. So this one, I'm gonna cut at an inch and three quarters. One and three quarter inch which is all the way on this trimmer, all the way to this outside black line. And I had to pay attention to my tallest candle. There we go. So now it's time to start, I'm gonna go back, re-dry fit things. So I'm still not 100% sure that I don't need to cut this piece down a little bit. I just don't think so. I've, something's gonna have to give. I don't think I have enough space. And maybe I do. We'll find out as I put this all together. I am missing, oh, no, there it is. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, this is why I love my magnetic board. And if I had been able to get my magnetic board set up and figure out how to show it to you guys, right? What I love about my magnetic board is I can use magnets to hold things in places. So as I'm accidentally, you know, moving things around, it's pieces aren't necessarily moving that much. So here we go, you can see, I'm pretty tight in there, right, with the, I mean, my photos are right next to my cupcakes and my cupcakes, they do because it's a little bit of a, a chunkier punch compared to something like the um, medallion frame that it, it definitely feels very, very crowded. So I'm going to have to make an adjustment. And before I make that adjustment, though, I want to see here at the top. I'm not even I'm not even all the way down here. Uh, 
I am going to ultimately move everything up. Because I just think I need to. So what I'll do is I'll start my borders at two inches. Instead of two and a half. So there'll be a half inch overlap. I'm not going to worry about cutting that paper down. I'll just line up that white border at two inches at the top. And everything's going to be able to shove up just a little bit more. So that's kind of what it's going to look like overall. And I will have some ability. I think the other thing I think I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to um, dial back this stripe just a smidge. I am at three quarters of an inch. I think I'm going to bring it back to um, just a half an inch. And I'll do that just by overlapping. Uh, that way that it's easy enough to put together. So one thing I want to do is um, I can tell here, I can see under, I can see that blue and white, the blue striped or the, excuse me, the white with blue polka dot. I'm not going to cut it down any further because if I shift things back by about a half an inch, um, I should be fine for the overlap and everything. So that's, that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start putting this together just to show you how that works. Um, we're doing pretty good on time. So I know that I only want a half an inch of this to show. So what I'm going to do is when I put my pieces on, my pieces here are all one inch. These pieces are an inch. So when I put this paid piece on, I'm gonna come up here to an inch and a half at the top. And that way, when I overlap that inch, it'll all be nice and even. So let me get some adhesive, put that in place. That stripe is pretty bold. So I think taking it back to just a half an inch will be just fine. Um, Let's see here. I think this will work because then I can just butt up. I need to get this piece, this white piece down because normally it would have been, this would have, it would have been what I built it on, but since I didn't have a full sheet, I couldn't build it on there. So let me go ahead and adhere this in place. And I'm gonna come down and line it up at one inch. That should be enough. Well, I'll bring it up to one and a quarter. This piece is going to adhere over, overlap it by about a quarter of an inch. Always make sure you keep your, um, your background paper lined up. So you may have to adjust that all the time on your cutting mat. Just make sure it stays lined up, especially if you are using, I'm using the rulers on the outside. Putting all these pieces on. I'm going to build the top and the bottom and then I'll center everything in the middle. So 
So I'm going to put my borders on the top. Remember I talked about I was going to layer this one two inches from the top. So I'll put that one on first. This is my, um, the white with blue dots. Double checking that I'm lined up at the top, come across here, layer that on. Now I'll do the same for the blue. Got a little bit that I need to trim off. Get that in there. And I want a little bit of that. I'm at about an eighth of an inch showing at the bottom. So I have those cakes. Now we'll come in with those other pieces. And these will all just butt up right against. Actually, what I need to do, I need to put that piece on. So I need to have my stripe. Remember, I need my stripe to actually only expose a half an inch. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna look here. I need to have my stripe come out here three and a half inches from the top. That'll give me, because these pieces right here line up at three inches. So if I have this lined up at three and a half all the way across, I'll have that half inch. So before I put these one inch pieces down, I will put my stripe this piece and I'm going to line it up at three and a half inches and then everything should overlap nicely. These pieces just butt up right against the bottom edge of that white border. So they're easy to line up. I use my ruler to put, or I use my mat to put that border on straight. So these pieces should all go in nice and easy. Yeah, I like the fact, I do like that I dialed back that stripe just a little bit. It's a pretty bold stripe. You don't need a lot, but I like it. I think it's fun. The pattern is different using all sorts of different patterns here, but just a little bit there. Now I've got some breathing room around my pieces and I'll be able to put my photos in. Yeah, I like that. Definitely like that I scooted back. I dialed back the top a little bit. I still have plenty of green here at the top. Dialed back that stripe here. I also, instead of having these be one inch tall, I could have just done um, three quarter inch tall on these blocks, but the one inch is fine. Actually, it should be this, because I think, well, I don't know if she blew out the candles before or after. She was in the photo with her sibling, but there we go. I like that. I like, I see, I just needed that breathing room around the photos. Everything else felt so tight in there. Just gives those cakes, those cupcakes, a little bit of space. So the other part that I have here that I will be working with is I've got a, you take the cake. Um, and I'm pretty certain I'm going to cut this. Let me just actually move this out of the way. I'm not going to put my photos on the other pieces on just yet. I'll get those in a second. I am going to use, if I can find, I'm going to see, I want to use, I think, the custom cutting system. I don't know if I want a four inch piece. That's really big. I actually am going to go ahead and have to put these down because I need to see what size I can cut this title to. 
line it up on here so I can put my cupcakes on straight. Nobody wants tilted cupcakes. And that's gonna line up there. Get my photos on. Well, probably need to put my cupcakes in the bottom and then center my photos across the middle. When you're doing things where you're centering, but they're not, it's not really centered centered. I mean, I'm not centered at six inches, but I need to be centered in my opening. So here, lining up my page here at the bottom, I have just about, just over an eighth of an inch, I think at the top. So I'll go with that at the bottom as kind of my spacing between that green and white stripe and my cupcakes. And it still gives me a lot of space to put these photos. But now that I have the cupcakes situated, I can put the photos in there. That looks pretty good. Just get them lined up as straight as I can. Okay, now kind of imagining, I do have, you know, I can just toss my piece up there and get an idea. I mean, that's, I think I'll be okay if I come in and I trim it with, This is the decision part that I always hem and haw over. I mean, I literally will like spend five minutes deciding whether I want to commit to cutting this. I'm going to be real tight around some of these pieces, but I think I'll be okay. I'm going to cut this with the, so I've got my, got my uh, circle number three, and I'm going to be using the red blade to cut this. So I'm just trying to make sure Okay. So there we go. Cut that out. Now what I'm gonna do, now here's the decision. What color should I be using to outline that? Now the challenge is I don't, I could do green. I don't have enough green. I think I just need to do blue. Yep, I'm just gonna have to do blue. I don't really have enough of any other color to do that. Oh, navy would be an option. Ooh, navy might work. Let me see. But now you're asking me to find that I don't have. Oh, let me try navy because I might that like I do like that idea. It really will pop against everything else. So thank you, Patty, for that suggestion. Okay, so since I used circle number three on the inside, but I use the red blade. I can't go any bigger. What I have to do is come over here to circle number one and I'll use my red blade on the outside track. And that's going to give me, it gives me a pretty chunky border all the way around, but I think that'll be fine. I didn't want anything too thin anyway. It's pretty bold. The other option I have, okay, now imagine this with me is, I can get kind of crazy here, maybe, well, I'm gonna run into the problem, is I could come in and cut that off and either 
Well, let's imagine that I could, I could come in all the way to the top. If I think that's too chunky, I could come in like that. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chop off. I'm going to actually decenter this at the top rather than having it take up this whole big thing. I'm just going to come in at the top here. So let me adhere this in place. Oh, I got to make sure I use the right side. I was looking at the other side. It's like, wow, I didn't cut that very good. That was the other side. So here's the one. So now I need to look at it because it kind of alters. I can't cut off quite as much at the top, but that's okay. I think that one is just so off. It'll be, it'll be good. Always pay attention to which side you're using. <laughs> um, the vertical and the horizontal mat, sometimes they're just, they are on there just enough difference. So what I can do here is I'll bring this up and I'm gonna cut off across the top. See now I wish, oh, I think I'll be okay. I mean the option, the other option is to come here, down here and cut. But I think I like the top. I'm gonna put this on sideways so that I can look at where I'm going across the top. I wanna to be able to see this line. Bring it down just a smidge. These little details always take me a little bit longer. I'm not quick on this part. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. Grab my trimmer, flip it over, and hope for the best after I cut it. Lining this up. I would have liked it to be a little bit centered more down here. I think if I thought about cutting it, I think this is gonna be just fine. I probably can come in. I have stickers and other embellishments um, that I can use in here. The other thing I was thinking of doing, I will admit I probably should do, I could either come in that's kind of bright, or I do have the happy birthday banner that is the craft in the blue that could come across here. Gets a little busy. So I may play around with it a little bit more, go through my stash here and see what I've got. I've got all sorts of stuff from the party time collection. So I play with it a little bit and see I don't know, we'll figure it out. But that in general is going to be kind of what the layout looks like. Um, I could always just put um, some additional, uh, a sticker down there or something and say it was number 16, so definitely a milestone one. So, all right, we'll switch over here. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. As I mentioned before, uh, this will be the last one until the new year going to take a couple weeks off, enjoy the holidays. Um, when I say take it off, I'm just taking it off from Scrapbook Live. I will still be working on some various things um, uh, coming up to the new year, one of which will be the Winter Frolic, which starts January 1st. That is a class that Tessa and I put together. It's eight weeks. It's all about keeping um, your projects going, motivation, motivating you to keep working on pages. We do have a page contest and number of pages that you complete. Um, we also have weekly challenges, weekly throwback challenges, or weekly throwback um, layouts. So it's a lot of fun. You can find out details on that on the meganandtessa.com website. Um, so we'd love to see you guys join us for that. Um, 
In terms of other stuff upcoming, January is going to be a fun launch. Uh, we've already had a sneak peek at a product coming up, the new, um, it's called Tropic Time Collection. It looks adorable. I don't have any of it yet, but um, we have, the advisors have seen a sneak peek and we'll have more um, details on what is coming up in January. The full launch, we'll know that at the end, the last Friday of the month. So I think that that's like the 29th. We'll have all those details, but um, it's going to be a lot of great things coming in 2023. So hopefully you guys are all, you know, kind of geared up for that holiday, right? It's maybe a little bit of time to put some of those things away, unless of course you have vacation planned and then you're like coming home and you're just going to like scrap up the whole time, right? But for a lot of us, it is all about making memories over the next few weeks and then print those photos and get them ready to scrapbook in 2023. Um, that's a big goal for me over the next couple of weeks is to go through my photos and take the time. I started doing that even over Thanksgiving, sending off a lot of photos to print, getting ready for winter frolic. That's a huge hurdle for me is getting all those photos printed. So take the time, go through your photos as you're taking photos this holiday, um, mark them as your favorites. I do that now with my phone. I can mark them as my favorites. I can then select all those favorites and upload for printing. So it's easy sometimes to go through a few at a time. Um, when you're getting together with family, maybe put together a shared Google drive or some other way, a Dropbox or something that allows you guys all to dump your photos into the same place where everybody can see them. You can grab some ones to print, especially if you have, um, a lot of families, different perspective. It's a great way for you to get in the photos too. So make sure you're in the photos and I'm, I'm literally looking at myself on screen as I say that, because that is an area where I struggle is to be in the photos, but make sure you're getting yourself in those photos this holiday. Take the family photos um, and you'll you'll be very happy you did. Um, so I hope everybody has a fantastic holiday season. Um, I will see you all again at the first of the year. I'll be posting on my Facebook page and all that fun stuff. So I'm not really going anywhere. Well, I'm, I am literally going to California, but I'm not, um, I'll be around. Just, we, we just won't have Scrapbook Live for a couple of weeks. So I will see you all in January and um, have a fantastic um, holiday season. Happy new year. We'll see you all soon. Thanks for joining.